This tutorial uses Windows 8.1. There are some differences between Windows 8 and 8.1, but the major difference is that 8.1 includes a start button. It should be noted that this lesson is only a quick overview. When Windows starts, you will need to click on the desktop and you will be prompted to enter your password. What you will see after this initial screen will depend upon how Windows 8 has been set up. The two main areas are the start screen, which is what we can see here, and the desktop, which we shall look at shortly. On this start screen is where the most used apps are accessed from. Apps are basically just programs and applications. If we interact with the screen, say move the mouse, then two things will happen. The first is an arrow which will appear pointing downwards, and if your apps fill the screen, then a scroll bar will also appear. We can move the scroll bar by clicking on it and moving it in either direction. This can also be achieved by using a scroll mouse. This is a mouse that contains a wheel, normally between the left and right mouse button. Click on the arrow pointing downwards, it will display all the apps that are installed. Once again a scroll bar may appear at the bottom of the screen, and as before it can be moved using the mouse pointer or using the scroll function on the mouse. You'll also notice that the arrow that was pointing downwards is now pointing upwards. Naturally this allows us to return to the first start screen. Notice how the apps are sorted in alphabetical order, so if one was looking for Internet Explorer, they would find it under I. If we scroll to the far right, certain apps have been categorised. Windows Accessories, Windows Ease of Access and Windows System. Some apps do not fall into any of these categories, like the one we see here called Oracle VM Virtual Guest Editions. At the top of the screen you will find a label called Apps, and a further label to the right of this called By Name. Click on this, a drop down menu will appear. So we can sort the apps by date installed, by most used, or by category. If we click on any of the category names, the tiles, as they are called, will be removed just leaving the category names. Now if, for instance, we click on Books and Reference Category, then the tiles will return. This also applies to the other three settings, so if we change it back to the default setting, by name, then click on A, the tiles are hidden. Clicking back on any of the letters, we'll call the tiles to return. In the top right hand corner of the screen, you will find a spyglass. This allows us to search the apps. As an example, let's say we want to find the control panel. Then we'll click on the spyglass and, as soon as we type in the letter C, a list is produced. This list gets smaller and smaller the more letters we add to our search. Let's return to the first screen by clicking on the up arrow. As we have said, these pictures are called tiles and are a shortcut to our apps. These can be moved by clicking on them moving them to their new position, then releasing the mouse button. If we right click on one, a drop down menu will appear and we can do various things, including resizing the tiles. If you right click on the start screen, a drop down menu will appear. So we have the facilities to name the groups that appear on the screen by clicking on the labels. To come out of the Name Group mode, right click on the Start screen again, then click on Stop Naming Groups. We can change the account picture of the user by right clicking on it. Lock the computer so a password will be needed to unlock it, or sign out to allow another user to use the computer. To the right of the username is the Power button, and right clicking on this will allow us to shut down or restart the computer. Also, to the right of this is another search option, but this time will include the Everywhere. So this is the computer and internet, and will include the keywords that you use. It will find any file, image, videos, etc. Settings that cover sound, screen, printers, etc. Files on this computer and two other further web options for image and videos. If we move the mouse pointer to the top right hand corner, a further menu will appear. The search option which we've just covered, the share option that will allow users to send an email or share a particular file or folder. Start which we shall look at next, 
devices, this may include multimedia devices, and the final option in the list is settings. This will produce a list that will include personalize, tiles, help, and at the lower part of the screen, network and sound. Brightness settings, which this monitor does not support and hence the message unavailable. Power allowing us to shut down or restart, and the keyboard settings and change PC settings. We did say earlier that one major addition was made to Windows 8.1 and that was the start button. But this will not appear until we have changed to the desktop view. There are many ways to do this. First we can see here a desktop app. If we scroll down we can find it under D. Or we can use the Windows key. If we press the Windows key once it will return us to the top part of the screen. Pressing it for the second time will cause the desktop to appear. If we press the Windows key again, the start screen will reappear, but this time if we place the cursor at the edge of the screen, the start button will appear and if we click on this, we can swap between screens. If we right click on the start button, we can access different PC settings. If we right click on the desktop, it will allow us to set things like the desktop icons, create new files or folders and change the screen resolution and personalize. If we right click on this taskbar, it will allow us to add extra toolbars, cause the task manager to appear and unlock the taskbar. Another option is properties. The taskbar tab allows us to lock the taskbar. We could demonstrate this by removing the tick from lock the toolbar, then clicking on apply. Now we move the taskbar to the right hand side top, left hand side, then back to the bottom. It is also possible to increase its size, allowing many icons to be inserted onto the taskbar. The navigation tab allows us the option to change the corner navigation and the start screen when we boot into Windows. The jump list allows us to store recently opened programs and once again we can add different tools to the taskbar. In our example on the taskbar we have the start button, file explorer, store, action center, network, sound and date and time. We also can see a selector. This allows us to show some hidden icons, USB devices and in our example virtual box but it may have other items as well that are not shown here. This can be customised. Here we can choose which of the icons we want to appear on the taskbar. For instance, we can hide the action sensor icon or only make it appear when notification messages need to be displayed. One item that is missing from the desktop that appeared in previous versions of Windows and that is My Computer. To access, you will need to change to the start screen. Using the Windows key, or clicking on start or moving the mouse pointer to the top right hand corner of the screen then clicking on start. Click on the down arrow then scroll to the right. Windows system then click on this PC. Of course we could have also searched for this app by changing to the start screen, clicking on the spy glass then as we type in we can see the other options that appear. This has just been a very quick view of Windows 8, which is a radical change from previous versions that have been seen in the past.